AFCON 2023 and Nigeria. Niger are through to the semi-finals of the tournament. That is AFCON after beating Angola 1-0. Thanks to Ademola Lukman, his goal just before halftime, his third knockout stage goal of the tournament. That uh, ties him. He becomes the fourth player to score three knockout goals for Nigeria after JJ Okocha, after Odion Igalo and Rashidi Yekini. So he's in illustrious company, but Nigeria really had to fight for it. Um, the one thing I'll give Nigeria is that they completely just nullified the Angola attack. This was the best attack versus the best defense of the tournament. Angola, through Jelson Dalla, through Gilberto and Mabululu, really didn't do much. For the coach to sub everyone off at some point, um, I think even, even, even Nanik went off, uh, their captain, Freddie. And when Freddie went off, is when I knew, hey, yo, these guys have been nullified and they're really looking for a plan B. So Zito Lufumbo came on for Gilberto. Then um, uh, 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 Freddie uh, went off for Bruno Paz and Milson came on for Gelson Dalla. They brought in Jeremy Bala, Jeremy Bella and Zito Luvumbo, people who've made impact off the bench for Angola, but they really couldn't do much. Uh, to start off this game, uh, Mabululu off the post uh, after a Gilberto header. They started quite brightly. They were really, really bright. I was so... The first five minutes, to five to ten minutes, they were really bright. And I was like, wow, Angola have come to play. What can Nigeria do now? They need to show us that. They are also <laughs> willing to play this game, yeah? Um, then obviously... Um, they didn't get the score and it was nil-nil. Uh, the game was tight. The one thing about Nigeria that I didn't give me confidence is how Iwobi was playing in midfield. Iwobi was quite tentative. Like, I didn't... He was tentative. His touches were just too heavy. And at that point, you were like, guys, why did Iwobi start this game? Like, it didn't make sense to me. Now that Yusuf is back fit after he was stretched off in the first game, he came back in this game, actually played the last few minutes to close off the game. I think moving on the knockout stage, he might actually play them. But... The thing about playing Iwobi is at least you have someone who's daring to make those risky passes. And just as we were talking, <laughs> all saying all these things about Iwobi, he made he made like a crossfield ball, um, in 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 his own half that would have been won by Nangol and side to the other side of the field. I think it was to Sa to Zaidu. Yeah, it was to Sanusi Zaidu. And then Zaidu just one touch to uh, where around where Moses Simon was. Yeah, uh, Moses Simon. But then I thought the defender had it covered, but Simon just got there before him and all of a sudden it's a counter. He just managed to get the byline, quick cross, Ademola coming late into the D, left-footed short, top corner, makes it 1-0 just before halftime. And you are like, yo, this is, this is the threat that uh, Simon, Lukman, they bring to the team and having Iwobi, right? Explosive power and just getting those moments and capitalizing on them. Um, even though I thought Chukweza would have started this game, but clearly Moses Simon was... After this result, he was the better option. He was the one that suited the role that um, and the way they were playing. So yeah, made it one nil just before halftime. Um, then second half, it was Aussie men. Aussie men just like the boys are nuisance again. Like games prior to this uh, to this one in this tournament, he's getting into nice places. He's he's threatening. He's scoring and it's offside. He's uh, he's like he's just there. He's always in and about. I think it's the second time he's had like. He's just been a nuisance and has, has scored and the goal has been disallowed. So he scored a header with, I think, 13, 14 minutes to go that came off the post. Uh, sorry, that went in, that went in, and then um, the ref ruled it all, like offside, which it was a clear offside. But just before that, Angola had had a chance as well. Like, it was an amazing through ball to Zini. Zini had just come on at halftime. And Zini just placed it in the corner, then came off the post. And that was the wake-up call I think Nigeria needed. Because at that point, they were just pushing back and back. They were letting Angola come at them. And it was not it was not ideal, yeah? Because you're trying to put pressure on the opponents and not give them confidence to keep attacking you. Zito Luvumbo came on. He was really causing havoc on that wing. Um... But I feel like uh, the combination of Calvin Bassi and Zaidu really dealt with him well. Um, but it was a little bit too late for Angola. Like, they needed that spark of energy a bit earlier. This was like in the 87th minute is when now they're trying to really, really attack. Um, being Keeping Mabululu quiet, keeping all these people quiet, like, this was a very impressive, impressive defensive performance by uh, the Super Eagles. Um, who else? Who else? Who else? Um, yeah, I just want to talk about Nwabali. Nobali plays with a smile on his face. The Nigerian goalkeeper, every single time the camera is going to him, the guy is has the broadest smile you'll ever see. And it's just the passion, the love. 
of playing for your country that he he just embodies that so much but yeah but super eagles are through to the semi-finals they will play the winner of capo verde versus south africa we are going to watch now drc versus guinea so see you shortly and congrats to the super eagles i'm glad i got this jazzy oh see my hand